The word design means different things to different people. Often it's associated with how things look. Often it's used as a noun, as in, that's a good design. But really, it's a verb. It's not an it, it's a how. It's a way of doing things. It's a way of thinking. And above all, it's a way of thinking creatively. Design and technology, in all their various forms and disciplines, are fundamentally about converting ideas and raw materials into the products and services that we all need and use every day of our lives. Everything around us has been designed, from the user interface of our latest digital app, to the car we drive, the clothes we wear, the buildings we visit or live or work in, much of the food and drink we consume, the TV programs we watch, even the deodorant we spray. They've all been designed. They've all been made. I think design and technology is key to the type of thing that we do. In the world marketplace, we are as good as any of our competitors, if, if not better. We are constantly innovating. It's key to our future in the UK, and I think that our engineering is strong, and it's strong because we've had 25 years now of design and technology taught at a very early level. Since its inclusion in the first national curriculum in 1989, we have been teaching design and technology in schools from primary school right through to A-levels. This has provided pupils of all ages with opportunities to explore ideas and to design and make things that solve problems. In doing this, they learn how to use tools and equipment to create designs and to work with a range of materials. Design and technology is a phenomenally important subject. Logical, creative and practical, it's the only opportunity students have to apply what they've learnt in maths and physics. Our d and in this school runs through every subject that we do. So it, it links to maths, it links to our literacy work, it links to our history, our geography. So our design and technology here always links to what we're doing and it involves everyday skills that we're using all of our subjects. A lot of students love the beauty of numbers in mathematics. A lot of students love experimenting in science. But what design and technology does is it brings those subjects together to allow students to be creative, to try things, to apply those numbers, to use those experiments in science to a physical, to a real thing. Design and technology teaches young people about creating and developing ideas and about how things are made. It gives them experiences of making and evaluating the things which they design and teaches them about the materials and technology from which products and services are made along with the systems which make things work. You get to like design everything what no one else has designed anymore so you can be like inventors and stuff. I enjoyed studying design technology because I felt that it's more of a hands-on subject so you get to choose what you're going to do, you get to design what you want to design and whereas you don't get that in any other subject. In maths and science there is always a right answer to everything and that makes it quite difficult for lots of people like me who are creative based. Whereas design technology and many other subjects to do with making, it's all about if it can help then it's good and it's right and if it doesn't work then you just got to make it work. When I uh did design technology at school, it was very much about craft skills and we were taught a series of skills, processes, uh, tools and machinery, which of course is valuable and we still do teach those, um, but now more importantly than ever we're looking at the process of being creative, solving problems in different ways and I suppose ultimately taking risks and not being afraid of getting things wrong. So it is really quite different in that respect. For many who do design and technology, it sows the seeds of a passion. A passion which kickstarts further study at a graduate, technician or craft level and a career in the creative, engineering and manufacturing sectors. I use on a daily basis skills that I first had exposure to at D&T at the age of 15 and, and younger. So I, I couldn't see how I could get here now, which is designing products that are sold internationally without that first step of design technology. I've been lucky enough to do a range of design projects or creative um, projects from product, interior, 
um, digital experiences. And the thinking that I learned at Design and Technology at a young age is very much transferable to all those skills. So it's, um, it's one of those subjects that is essential and it's one of those subjects that um, can open a, a world of opportunity for, um, for the new generation of creatives and, and makers. I think design and technology te teaches you the kind of skills and problem solving that you can use in lots of different jobs outside the kind of design industry. And I think it can lead to lots of different places beyond the kind of careers that you might expect. So I studied design and technology in school and then went on to study graphic design at university and then got interested in advertising off the back of that, which led me to becoming a creative director at Wyman Kennedy, which is where I am today and which I love. Last year, the UK's engineering, manufacturing and creative industry sectors were together worth £500 billion. And for young people and their parents thinking about future careers, be aware that in recent years, the creative industries grew three times more than the wider UK economy. Since the introduction of design and technology in the 1990s, there's been a clear correlation between the numbers of people taking D&T and the increases in further and higher education going on to engineering and other subjects related to D&T. The link between D&T and engineering and the creative industries is clear and obvious. The latest estimate from Engineering UK predicts that we will need over 1.8 million new engineers in the decade leading up to 2022. In the creative industries, in design, in manufacturing, there simply are not enough people. And the result is for our business, that means we are having to pay more and more to get the people that we want. And we can't even get the people that we want. So anybody at the moment going into that industry is going to have a myriad of choice for their career of where they want to go. And Nesta predicts that we will need a further 1 million people to fill new creative jobs by 2030. So there are great job opportunities for young people in these industries and the opportunity to work in a rewarding environment in which creativity, imagination and innovation are highly valued. So career prospects are fantastic, but more than that, design and technology in schools gives fledgling scientists, engineers, linguists, lawyers and businessmen an experience of how the world works, of how things are made and how to think differently. Design and technology is a rigorous and challenging subject which builds a bridge between academic learning and its usefulness, relevance and application to the world. Well, I think design and technology in schools is absolutely vital for the rounded development of our young people. I see young people working together really well in groups and interacting really well with each other, chatting about their ideas. I see them problem solving all the time and I also see that they're dealing with real world situations. It also contributes to important life skills and personal qualities such as teamwork, resourcefulness and risk taking. All learning is reinforced by the successful application of knowledge, skills and understanding in many different contexts. And the design and technology curriculum provides lots of opportunities for literacy, numeracy, computer skills and scientific knowledge to be practically applied across all stages of education. I cannot see how the future of our world will become what we want it to be without allowing our children to develop their creative skills. And if you take away from the curriculum a subject like design and technology, uh, you are saying to children that that is not an important skill. That's ridiculous in, in today's education. In our business, we have to come up with ideas. We need to solve the world's problems. And you need to think of ideas outside the box. You can't do what everyone else is doing. You need to come up with new ideas, new ways of doing things, new ways of solving things. And if people, in whatever industry they're in, if they don't appreciate how you change things, how you create things, then we're not going to solve our problems. We're going to have a load of people doing the same thing time and time again, and that's not what the world needs. The UK was the first country in the world to introduce design and technology as a national curriculum subject, and we're still regarded as world leaders. The new qualifications and curriculum builds on that legacy. It fires young people's imagination, and it gives them the tools, knowledge and experience to turn their ideas into reality. You see things and you say why, but a designer dreams things that never were and says, why not? We need the next generation of young designers, engineers and technologists to constantly ask that question, why not? To think differently, to question the status quo and to find solutions to problems. And our design and technology teachers across the country will illuminate 
their path ahead and fire the spark of their imaginations to create a better future, a future which is better by design.